The Presidential Commission of Inquiry concluded its hearings as the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs featured as the final person to stand before the Commission on Day 23. First to testify in today's proceedings was former elections agent for the People's Progressive Party Civic and the now Minister of Agriculture, Zulfikar Musafa. His appearance served to enter into evidence several letters which had to be sent to the Chief Elections Officer as requests for important elections documents. These requests had to be made on several occasions as no favorable responses were received. Taking the stand as well was Commissioner of the Guyana Elections Commission, says Gunraj. Gunraj was at the time being cross-examined by attorney at law Nigel Hughes, who was providing representation for former DCEO of GCOM, Roxanne Myers. As had happened on day 22, however, Hughes was admonished for asking questions not in line with the evidence already submitted. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Mohabir Anil Nandlal was the last person to testify. Referencing the days of legal challenges just after Elections Day, the AG pointed out that after Claremont Mingo made the first declaration on March 5, he was subsequently admonished by the Chief Justice in the presence of GCOM commissioners and the chairperson. After, after the court proceedings, the court proceedings was in the morning of that day. I went back to Ashman's building and there I was, I saw me no continuing the same thing, using a spreadsheet, um, supervising two female assistants. And they were doing the identical thing that the Chief Justice just told him not to do. He told the Commission that statutory documents which were purported to be missing were also confirmed to be in the possession of GCOM by then Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield. I immediately approached Mr. Keith Lowenfield and I said we had this conversation about these documents. Of course, he accepted, he remembered, he said yes. GCOM, he received the documents. The documents are in the possession of GCOM and they are stored at Collingen as a location that GCOM apparently stores documents. On the east coast of Demerara, they are in a container there. As though it was some issue of privacy, the Attorney General said he was reprimanded by the CEO after disclosing that the documents were in the possession of GCOM. The following day, Mr. Chief Donofield admonished me. He said to me that, you know, he will stop having conversation with me because things that he says to me privately, I am repeating it to the press. And I pointed out to him that that can be a private conversation. That's the nation's business. That's important statutory instruments. Minister Nanlal also revealed that International Observer Group's proposals to return to observe the recount was rejected by the government at the time. Okay, did, did the then government object to the presence of national and international observers to the recount? Yes, some of them, I was trying to get there, that some right. of them couldn't stay that long, they didn't have the arrangements in place, so they left with a view to coming back when the recount started. Was one of these groups the Carter, Carter Center, Center yes. of Civil Yes, and Carter Center made their, um, their, made the fact that their request to return and rejected a big issue, but they, they were not permitted to come. The Commission of Inquiry was set up by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali to inquire into the events surrounding the March 2, 2020 general and regional elections. On day 22, there was little to no alteration or narratives being changed after Counsel Nigel Hughes, who appeared on behalf of former Deputy CEO Roxanne Myers, cross-examined several witnesses. The majority of testimonies so far by observers and other officials of the elections have all aligned to prove that there was a clear attempt to subvert the rule of law and the process of democracy.